I'm, I've uh, been a patron of PBI for some time and a supporter, a financial supporter, and I strongly support the outstanding work they do in a very difficult field. My background is uh, as a human rights lawyer in South Africa in the days of apartheid, and uh, I'm very familiar with some of the pressures on lawyers and human rights defenders who are trying to assist uh, communities, people who are being uh, treated, treated appallingly and whose human rights are being uh, li limited or el eliminated. And therefore, I had a natural empathy and understanding and admiration for human rights defenders who work in areas which are even more difficult than those we faced in South Africa in the apartheid era. And the dangers are greater. We did, to some extent, uh, uh, had risk possible. We had a fair amount of police uh, uh, aggression. Uh, we some some of us some got imprisoned. Some got imprisoned, but almost no one got killed by by uh, uh, the, the uh, directly. That I mean, lawyers didn't and human rights defenders, although many victims of apartheid who were political opponents were, were, were murdered. And I've been conscious that with PBI, these, the lawyers and the others who help people on the ground are risking their lives and the human rights defenders are taking risks themselves. And therefore I, I, I tremendously admire what PBI does and what his workers do and the lawyers and others who in the, in the countries concerned actually take these great risks in the interests of justice. I was asked to defend Nelson Mandela when he was arrested and charged with sabotage, uh, the penalty for which was death by hanging. And I was the lawyer asked if I would defend them in a time when most lawyers weren't very enthusiastic about attending political uh, opponents of the government and um, I met him for the first time actually in the jail in Pretoria in which he was being held with the other ten leaders of the African National Congress and the Communist Party. I can assure you that the reason I became his defence lawyer wasn't because I <laughs> wanted to make any money. We were <laughs> we virtually paid nothing at all but I, I believed in justice and I believed that every person is entitled to a defence, whatever, whatever they have done, and where they are fighting for liberty and freedom of their people, it was my privilege to try to help, help them carry on with their struggle and certainly to try to defend them and, where necessary, try to save their lives. Nelson Mandela had, for much of his life, tried to attain democracy and freedom for his people through non-violent means and eventually he realized that there was nothing it was no purpose in talking to the apartheid government about f freedom and justice for non-white people and therefore he and his movement decided that they would have to turn to a measure of violence it was very much a controlled measure of violence because they took care never to, uh, never to harm innocent uh, civilians and directed their, uh, their activities against the police and the government itself. Um, but when he was arrested and sentenced to life imprisonment, I think it became very clear to him that the way forward was not through fighting and trying to uh, change the government by force, because the government was far too strong for that, but the way forward was through peaceful negotiation, which tried to create a better country for everyone, whatever their colour, whatever their sex, whatever their racial orientation. Everybody should be treated the same and have the same opportunity. And that the way to do that was through 
negotiation backed by very clear principles and that you didn't accept compromises which was to, for example, to accept, ri uh, to accept rights for one section of the population, it had to be for everyone. And uh, his whole approach, which was, it required extraordinary courage and extraordinarily strategic ability and personality, uh, eventually won through and he achieved what he wanted, which was a free South Africa where everybody has the opportunity to lead a life uh, with the human rights which we all want. It's not perfect, in, of course, because wealth uh, is not available so far for everyone, but he attained what he wanted and he realised that negotiation and a measure of compromise was essential in order to avoid bloodshed and to build a country where one could go forward and where revenge was not on the agenda for the injustices of the past. His focus was how we move forward together, black and white and coloured and Indian and everyone in the country. Mandela was indeed a, a unique human being. He, his qualities encompassed every quality that all of us would aim for. <laughs> he was inc fearless and courageous. He was brilliant strategically. He had incredible interpersonal skills. He was generous and kind and warm and he treated everybody, however important or unimportant, in the exactly the same way. And he was amazingly charismatic. Uh, and he was, uh, he was unique. And um, he was prepared to give his life for his people. And in his, uh, and it was one of the difficulties of defending him that he said that a leader accepts responsibility for, their pe for everything their followers do. And therefore, if his followers have done anything which was illegal, he had done it as well, and he accepted responsibility. And he said, for the, because for the freedom of his people, there was no sacrifice which one would not make, including uh, being prepared to face death and even to be hanged. That was the measure of this remarkable man. I think in all the years that Nelson Mandela was in prison, he had so much time to reflect and to, and to analyze how to achieve his aims of freedom for his people that he left jail a wiser man than when he entered into it when he was a powerful a leader willing to fight in the uh, uh, after 27 years he realized that the best way to win battles is by by talking to people persuading them and realizing that there was a better way forward and Ma Mandela faced uh, in the trial he was charged with the most serious charge that they could make under the sabotage act and the penalty was death so this is what he faced should I apologise and say I'm sorry and, I've, uh, uh, and I, I, I won't carry on? And his answer was, I have no apologies, I accept responsibility. And the whole trial he turned from a trial of himself, himself and his fellow accused, he turned it into a trial of the apartheid government in the court of world opinion. And his message went out throughout the world about the injustices that the, that the non-white people faced in South Africa. And it, was, and it was the only way of getting through to the world because in South Africa the only thing which could always be published were court proceedings. But anything else he or his fellow accused said was banned and no newspaper was allowed to publish it.
but Mandela through the court get, and through what he said in court and the way he behaved in court. When he was asked at the beginning of the trial, Nelson Mandela, how do you, you accused number one, plead to the charges against you? And his response was, my lords, I am not guilty. It is the government which is guilty. And that set the tone for the trial. Nelson Mandela's contribution to South Africa is immense. He's, he's been the, the key person who is with his colleagues because he always believed in moving forward collegiately. He would ask for the advice of his colleagues before he made decisions. But he has transformed South Africa in a way which was unimaginable before before he, uh, uh, before he emerged from jail. Uh, and he has gone well beyond that because his courage, his principles, his forgiveness uh, has reverberated throughout the world as a model of how world leaders should behave. And I think everyone, in, every leader in the world and throughout the world, he enjoys immense respect and he is the model for the way uh, leaders should behave in putting the interests of their followers and of the people for whom they are fighting ahead of their own personal interests. I mean, I'm sure Nelson Mandela could have done without 27 years in jail. <laughs> Mandela's legacy of working together, ensuring that human rights are available to everyone in his country and that there's no racial or any other prejudice is really the model for which future generations will work. There'll be ups and downs before we'll get there, they get there, but that will be the aspiration to achieve this the South Africa that Nelson Mello, Mandela had fought for and had set the foundations for. The, the peace community is situated in the middle of warring factions. Each faction wants, has a particular agenda. What the peace community wants is to be allowed to develop in their own way, in a peaceful way, and to actually be able to exist as human beings with all the rights which naturally should be that of every human being. And the only way they can do that is by not siding with any of the warring factions. And it is a very difficult role which they play. It's much easier to go and shoot people than actually <laughs> to persuade people to actually make a stand for human rights. And so they've chosen a difficult path which requires great courage and therefore one has enormous admiration for them and a lot of it and much admiration for Peace Brigade International and its workers and volunteers who actually make such an important contribution to enable the people on the ground who are at risk to actually help them to avoid, uh, avoid some of the risk but all the time they are at risk and, they, and one has a great admiration for what they are doing. On a personal basis, basis, I have difficulty with forgiveness for terrible wrongs done to people. But you have to take a broader view and say the only way to move forward is actually through peaceful means. And it was very interesting, when I met Nelson Mandela a few years ago at a dinner, I, and I said, and he'd been very kind to the, to the prosecutor who had behaved appallingly, and I said, uh, Madiba, as we called him, how could you possibly say courteous things about the person who had behaved so terribly towards you? And he said, <coughs> you cannot I cannot afford personal revenge when my objective is to seek reconciliation and have everybody working together in the future. 
And what I think the community out there are doing is they're setting an example which will be followed in the end that it needs them, their, their work and the risk they take will inspire people in the future to work towards a free and forgiving world where people work together. And that is, I think, why their work is not only so important in the limited area which they live, but it spreads beyond in the country. Here are all these people who are prepared to sacrifice so much and take such risks because they want peace. And everybody, really, when they get sit back and think about it, or almost everybody, wants peace and an opportunity to live a happy life, bringing up children and whatever fulfills that. And so their actions inspire, are an inspiration for a future and better world. There is a, lim a limited but very important role that members of the law, uh, lords and uh, the commons, and more important, English society as a whole can do. They can show and demonstrate their support. They should urge their government, as they often do, and government of all, all governments have taken stands in favour of peace and in favour of human rights throughout the world. And importantly, because no organisation can exist without funds, all can, can contribute funds and support, and lawyers are particularly well equipped to provide support in one way or another. And the more that they do so, the more valuable it is. And the more people can provide financial support, the more benefit, well, uh, more good Peace Brigades International will be able to achieve.